thank you so much for joining me. In this video segment, I want to zero in on a, on a short discussion of the equilibrium constant, a bit about its magnitude and its dependency. What causes changes in the equilibrium constant? Now, if the equilibrium constant, and really much greater than one would be a little bit better, but if you have products over reactants and K is greater than one, that must mean that my numerator is greater than my denominator. So my numerator is greater. Well, since it's products over reactants, that indicates that overall, at equilibrium, the products are favored. So with large Ks greater than 1, you have a product favored system, um, which is if K is less than 1. Now, K will always be a positive number, but K can be numbers like 1 times 10 to the minus 48. I mean, teeny tiny fractions. So if you have a number less than 1, that must mean that your denominator is the larger of the two. And so if our denominator is larger, then that means our reactants are favored. So overall, at equilibrium, I have more reactants than I have products at equilibrium. If it's right around one, it's hard to make a conclusion without seeing powers and doing a few more calculations. But as a broad generalization, we can say that as the K increases, the amount of, of product at relative to reactant increases. Remember, it's product relative to reactant. So that's a little bit about the magnitude. And I will be, I will be discussing that in later videos as we compare um, specific examples. Of, of equilibria. Now, um, the next one is to make a, a very critical point. So I want us to do a few calculations with this reaction that involves uh, the formation or synthesis of HI. So K is going to be the concentration of HI and it would actually be squared. I will let you write that balanced equation over H2 times I2. And let's just, for the sake of argument, we're just going to say those are all aqueous, or excuse me, all uh, gaseous substances. Okay, and we'll do this in terms of molarity. So these are my initial molarities, what I started with in terms of hydrogen plus iodine. And in this first case, I had no product initially. So that's fine. And once it reaches equilibrium, these are my values. So if I plug those in to my equilibrium constant expression, I get 0.78 squared over 0.11 times 0.11. And if I've done my math right, it's 50. Okay? No big deal, but that would be if how to solve a problem if they give you all equilibrium values. You just plug those equilibrium values in. Now, I want to take a look at another scenario, and I want to point out something. These are all being performed or compared at constant temperature. K changes with temperature. So K is dependent on temperature. Now in this case, I've set up a situation where I have no I2, I have only product, so it's going to start forming reactant and then reach a point where reactant starts to form product again and the rates become equal. So I have different values, that EQ, I means initially, EQ means at equilibrium. If I plug those into K, lo and behold, I get 50. So you notice the exact numbers in the numerator and denominator. Um, I'll put those in ex explicitly just to make the first point. Those numbers that can change. You notice that although the concentrations are changing, K does not change. So it's kind of like saying I have one half and I have two fourths and I have 3 sixths, 
The numbers on the top and bottom change, but that ratio doesn't. They're all a half. They're all 0.5. So there's a couple more scenarios here. Sometimes you start with all only reactant, sometimes you would start with only product, and sometimes you would start with reactant and product. And I want to give you a hint. This would be a good time to calculate Q. That's a little bit in the future. But if you see all three reactants and products there, all reactants and products, you're going to calculate Q. We're given equilibrium values, so we don't need to do that. If we plug that into our equilibrium constant expression, lo and behold, we get 50 change our initial amounts, get slightly different equilibrium amounts, K is still 50. Here's the key take home here. Doing almost a whole video on this. As molarity or partial pressures change, the equilibrium constant K remains constant. Um, I don't know why it's a big trigger, a big mess up um, for kids. Just like the rate constant K is independent of molarity or partial pressure, equilibrium constant is independent of molarity and partial pressures. It only changes with T. They both do. Well, let's process this. This hopefully makes sense. They both depend on T. Well, big K is made up of little k's, which depend upon temperature and not molarity or partial pressures. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Very important principle, and I've seen quite a few questions that try to trip you up on that understanding. It's not really tricky. It's really trying to get at the heart of do you understand the concept of equilibria, not just how to plug in chug numbers. All right. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time.